welcome to our um, our Pittsburgh terminal. You notice we're in uh, uh, Coriopolis, but uh, we do call this our Pittsburgh terminal. Uh, right next door to here, we have a, uh, a pipeline facility that's our Coriopolis station. So uh, pipeliners are easily confused, so we had to call this something different. So uh, welcome to our Pittsburgh terminal. Um, uh, just a, a quick background on Buckeye. Uh, uh, Buckeye actually started in 1886 uh, uh, as part of uh, Standard Oil. So uh, uh, we've been in this business for uh, for quite a few years, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we're primarily a uh, logistics provider, um, uh, petroleum uh, refined petroleum products uh, uh, in the Northeast. Uh, um, our system extends. Uh, and don't have a, a map here with me, but uh, um, our system primarily extends from the, the, the Northeast uh, New, New Jersey or New York and uh, Philadelphia harbors and comes uh, west here. We also can get product from Chicago, St. Louis, uh, Ohio uh, refineries and uh, uh, and Detroit and, uh, and bring here. So uh, um, this area is a, a very busy area for us. Um, like I said, you know, we've had the, the station next door. Um, this was previously a BP terminal uh, that we bought in uh, 2011 along with a bunch of other assets from, uh, from BP. So uh, uh, we've owned it for uh, a little over two years and uh, uh, we've seen a lot of growth with it. When, uh, when BP owned this facility, it was a uh, gasoline only uh, facility. Um, they did have ethanol for uh, you know for, for gasoline blending, but uh, uh, we saw an opportunity to uh, to expand the terminal and to uh, to, to add uh, um, biodiesel and, uh, and and ultra low sulfur diesel uh, capabilities. So uh, um, so I worked with uh, Susan Sazanke. Um, Part of a sustainable energy, and along with the uh, uh, National Biodiesel Foundation, uh, um, to uh, to get a grant as we were looking to do this uh, expansion into uh, biodiesel, uh, had worked with uh, with Susan uh, and, and uh, uh, as part of the, uh, the the NBF and the, the DOE grant, we were able to uh, to fund a uh, a project to install biodiesel offloading um, tankage uh, and. Uh, a loading rack injection where the uh, the truck pulls up and they can get uh, anywhere from a uh, V2 up to a 20% a, a V20 uh, biodiesel blend. Um, so uh, we've had a lot of great success uh, with this uh, project and uh, uh, we're, we're very fortunate to work with uh, with the NBF and the, the DOE on this uh, project. Uh, and uh, this terminal is a, a very uh, a key facility for us. As I mentioned, on the petroleum side and the pipeline side, we can get here from the East Coast refineries or from the, the Midwest. So uh, it allows our customers to, to play the arbitrage and, and pricing. And then with the biodiesel uh, capabilities, um, you know, with the, the Pennsylvania mandate, there's a certain, but we have the ability to blend up to 20% that, uh, you know, we've seen customers taking advantage of, uh, uh, of that and blending uh, above and beyond the, uh, the, the Pennsylvania mandate. So um, we see this as a win-win. Like I said, you know, we are the provider of the solution. Uh, it's not our product that goes through here, but it is our facilities, and we allow them to do uh, uh, you know, what they need to do to, to, to be in business. So uh, um, we're very appreciative of the, uh, the grant. Uh, looking forward to, to getting everybody a chance to see what we've, uh, what we've done and the, the work that we've completed. And uh, uh, again, welcome to uh, Pittsburgh. So thank you. Any questions? Do you have a dedicated source for your biodiesel, or you just buy it on the market? Um, we don't purchase the uh, the biodiesel. Again, we have the, the facility, and we offer that to our customers. Um, with biodiesel, we have uh, uh, three approved suppliers of uh, uh, biodiesel at this time. Um, uh, they are uh, Amerigreen, uh, Louis Dreyfus, and uh, uh, Lake Erie Biofuels, or Hero BX. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the uh, the three approved suppliers that we have at this point. Uh, we are continually looking for other uh, suppliers, but what we do is we provide that list of approved suppliers, and then you as a customer would have the option of buying from any one of those. And, and the reason why we have approved suppliers is that we wanted to be able to fully vet uh, from a quality standpoint. If, uh, if you and I are both holding product in the same tank, we need to make sure that that product uh, can sit there and not, uh, that my product won't affect your, uh, your product. So uh, uh, while we do just have those three, we have, uh, you know, or we we are open to looking at others uh, based on customer demand uh, of, of which uh, suppliers they would like to see. 
Once they get here, are they commingled? Or uh, yes. Yeah, no, we have uh, one tank uh, that, that uh, the product is commingled, which, like I said, it was a, a large part of why we had to be very restrictive in, in terms of uh, uh, approving suppliers for the facility. I don't want to monopolize things, but do they do they have the same feedstock? For their biodiesel, or is it a variety of feedstocks? Uh, a variety of, uh, of feedstocks. They have the ability, but uh, with with our performance uh, requirements of the, and the specifications, um, especially on the, uh, the the cold flow uh, properties, uh, it does. In essence, it does limit what the uh, the feedstock can be. But as long as it can meet the uh, performance uh, parameters, uh, they are not confined to a specific uh, feedstock. Will you be able to purchase? Up to B100. Um, right now, the system is uh, designed with uh, with the flow rates and, and that that the the pumping system of the bodies can do. Uh, it's really designed for up to a 20 percent. We would have the uh, infrastructure and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we would have the infrastructure we could expand that to do a full uh, 100. But I think the, the the design of the existing system was to do up to a 20 percent blend. Uh, and and right now, our facility is is not. Um, uh, while we're looking at expanding the biodiesel tankage, we don't have, in an ideal case, we'd be able to make this a biodiesel hub that uh, other terminals could then take B100 and take to their facilities and distribute that. Um, at this point, we don't have that. Uh, so, so yeah, our, our, uh, the biodiesel capabilities are, are really up to 20%, 20%, but it is expandable, yes. So you, so you basically, you vet the suppliers and, and, and you have your customers say, okay, I want to buy from him, or, or they can look at the different prices from these guys, mm -hmm. which should be reasonably close, I mm -hmm. would think. Yeah, and, 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 but uh, with that, one of the reasons why, would, in a lot of facilities, uh, um, uh, and some of our competitors will have where there, there is one supplier and you have to, to buy from them. And, and while that works in most cases, it does give limited buying power to that, uh, that customer. So if you only have one person right. you can choose from, they pretty much can control that price. We wanted to provide our customers with options so that they were protected and knew that they could always compare prices and make sure that they were uh, getting a, a competitive price. So, uh, it, which is really the, the 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 intent of having multiple approved suppliers. Logistically, it's simpler to have one supplier right, that just right, right. brings it in and they <coughs> divvy it up in the tank. But uh, you know, we wanted to make sure the customers were protected that they had uh, the, the ability to, uh, to to get the best price. How big is your storage? Um, just under a Four, thousand four, barrels. Yes, uh, but forty-two thousand gallons. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate any problems mixing these products together? Um, no, we've done um, and, and had done some testing. Uh, and <laughs> every time I talk to Bob, there's always a uh, train in the background. So I, I, I feel at home uh, here. I'm very popular on conference calls because of that. Could you much get your phone, please, Bob? <laughs> we always know whose phone it is, though. Um, no, uh, we've uh, we have done some tests, and the industry's done some uh, testing. Um, that is a concern of ours, and why we have limited the number of suppliers that we want to to uh, to look. Um, at this point, we haven't seen any uh, adverse effects of uh, uh, of, of uh, mixing the, uh, the fuels, and we we have been in, in other locations. Uh, we've had uh, different suppliers uh, uh, commingling in the same tankage for over three years, I would say. So, and, and we, not to say that we co couldn't have a problem, we haven't had uh, any issues at any of those facilities. Once it meets ASTM specs, there shouldn't be any problem. However, uh, I've run into problems in uh, purchasing B2 and wanting to upgrade it to B50. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, and um, one of the the things that I, I, I do know that uh, with the uh, you know our, our system is an inline blending system, whereas the uh, uh, the, the petroleum based fuel is injected with the uh, the, the biodiesel, uh, which allows for a better uh, blend, um, a, a splash blend. Which I don't know if that's the system that you're referring to of putting the biodiesel on top of the the diesel. Um, I've heard reports of that, uh, you know, especially up above a, a B20, having more difficulty of uh, of getting a good blend. The potential for the uh, the, the biodiesel to to to, to stay in, so, and potentially 
precipitate out. Um, I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case, but our um, concern is mixing two different suppliers' product together. Mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and we know that a lot of people are producing, putting out B5 now instead of the mandated B2, mm -hmm. which is fine, yeah. and then we add to it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we don't like to mix two different suppliers. Of the, right. the bodies, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, and that's a fair, and and, um, and and I'm glad that you mentioned that because you know, as as we've seen, we we've seen up to a 20 percent. We have we don't have the ability to get above that, but uh, you know, perhaps at those uh, larger uh, blend percentages, that might be a, a bigger concern that we need to uh, to worry about. So I'm I'm glad that you mentioned that. That's that's definitely something that we will. Uh, uh, look at, but uh, in the, uh, the you know up to the the, the twenty percent blends now, um, you know downstream of us when the customer loads here and they get there up to B twenty, if they add additional biodiesel to that, you know we wouldn't necessarily know. But typically, if they have any kind of a quality issue, even if it's even if they've altered the fuel, typically we hear about it. So uh, so I'm not aware, but I don't know that anybody is doing that. I, I just yeah. think of. You know, going up to B20 here mm -hmm. with three different suppliers, and then we add a fourth supplier. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. This is like scrambled eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's why, like I said, you know, the, with the three suppliers that we have, you know, we, we have our, our specifications are based off of the ASTM D6751. I, I believe that's what it, but then we also, have, our, our specifications are actually more stringent than that. So, uh, uh, so we, we provide, uh, uh, it, it's a much tighter window of the of product that can come in here. There are some users who only want soy base, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of users who will use any type of mixture because of the price. Right, right. Yeah. Um, uh, right now it's hard to find 100% soy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, and, and we don't uh, mandate soy. I believe that the, the majority of the product that comes here is, uh, is soy based off of the, uh, the, 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 the products that we have and the specifications, but uh, it's not required to be soy, but that is, uh, I think, the ideal and what uh, customers are looking for. Have similar operations at all your other facilities, or is this unique? Um, not at all of our other facilities. Um, but that we currently own, uh, I believe, 102 terminals uh, across the uh, uh, the country. Um, I would say we have biodiesel in probably about 15 to 20 of them. Um, but uh, that's also one of the uh, I, I think one of our, our largest uh, areas for growth is uh, uh, is biodiesel. That um, you know, it's a, a service that we can provide to others, and uh, um, again, since we don't own the product, we have to work with our customers to develop that need for it. But once it's developed, we'll work to, to get the system installed. So uh, um, I think that you know, especially with uh, the renewable fuel standards and, and, and different uh, uh, you know, incentives, I, I believe that that's uh, going to be a continually growing uh, area for us in our uh, in our terminals. Um, you know, and I had mentioned before, uh, we don't move biodiesel in our pipelines uh, because of uh, jet fuel uh, concerns and the potential for contamination, but um, the industry is working on that, and if we get to the point where we can move biodiesel in the, the pipelines, uh, we'd certainly like to, uh, to do that. Uh, you know, we have the distribution set up, network set up to get to the terminals. Uh, if we can uh, get biodiesel there through it, we'd, uh, we'd love to do it. We're just not there uh, yet, and, and as you can imagine, with jet fuel, we move very slowly. Slowly, uh, uh, the industry moves very slowly in terms of uh, accepting change. So, okay. Our, our next speaker uh, from Congressman Doyle's office, uh, Jeffrey Shaper, um, the economic development person. I think it's the first time that I've actually heard of this facility. I, I knew it was part of this. Actually, it's, it's funny because uh, we've actually worked with Colin Highway before. Okay, this facility, I've been down there to see the actual conversion and him starting at the basic level coming in and, and, and taking the grease from McDonald's and, and the oil and stuff like that and converting that. And, and I was asked him a couple times about the infrastructure and he said, you know, it's getting in the place and such. Uh, but certainly from the congressman's standpoint, uh, Colin went in for a grant about uh, three years ago and we were we helped him get it and that was, that was nice because it's... Braddock's gotten to be one of those alternative places for, for sustainable energy and a lot of things going on. So 
you know, I'm glad to see this is working up here, but at any point uh, we can do anything in terms of letters of support or, or, or trying to put some things through. I mean, things are tough in Washington right now. But certainly, you know, the congressman supports, you know, this alternative energy, the movement, sustainable development, and anything that we can do, you know, please just ask and we'll be on top of it. So, appreciate it. Thank you. First of all, um, I'd like to thank uh, I thank uh, the Nassau Biodiesel Foundation and Buckeye Terminals for including PRCC to to be here for this grand opening of the biodiesel blending station. Many reasons to consider um, use of biodiesel. Overall, combining biodiesel with diesel um, produces a cleaner burning fuel. Uh, biodiesel was one of the easiest fuels to immediately implement because it's dis distributed via existing fuel infrastructure. Um, it's an added benefit. Biodiesel promotes growth in the U.S. agricultural sector, reduces emissions in diesel-powered buses, and can uh, contribute significantly to health benefits of children. There are more than 600 um, B20 refueling stations in the United States. Um, biodiesel is biodegradable, non-toxic. Exhaust does not smell as strong. No threat to human health. Reduces emissions um, that cause respiratory ulcers and only fuel in the U.S. to compete EPA health effect testing under the Clean Air Act. Redu um, biodiesel non-carbon is, is a carbon neutral and, the, and it does not add carbon to the environment. Instead, it takes carbon that's already part of the plant and animal matter and uses it as a fuel source. Reduces particulate matter, soot, hydrocarbon, and carbon monoxide emissions. Supports U.S. agricultural and rural communities. According to the National Biodiesel Board, the biodiesel industry expects to create 74,000 jobs by 2015. According, uh, a potential to generate 7.3 billion in gross domestic product. U.S. is one of the greatest agricultural product exporters. Biodiesel returns 3.2 units of energy for every one unit of energy used to create it. Conventional diesel returns point eight three units of energy for every one unit. So some of the benefits of biodiesel, um, again, extremely high energy balance, much less fossil fuel was needed to produce, um, refine and distribute. Um, one of the most common um, biodiesel uses B20, 80% diesel, pure um, biodiesel 100 benefits the blends including B2 uh, and B5 and more than 350 million gallons of biodiesel were produced in the U.S. Um, today, engines are most powerful heavy-duty vehicle buses, industrial mobile equipment. Biodiesel blends are used in heavy-duty vehicles as well as uh, public trans transit, uh, school buses, tractor trailers, SUVs, farm equipment. And hopefully this plant will help Western Pennsylvania increase the use of biodiesel in the future. So thank you again for, for Buckeye um, and the National Biodiesel Foundation for including us. Um, one thing I'd like to announce is uh, in talking with our president today um, and our partnership, we're offering um, Buckeye Terminals a two-year gold membership to PRCC, which includes uh, your logo on our website, on our newsletters, and scholarships to attend um, the community college on alternative fuel classes that we teach there. So thank you. Sorry, Colin couldn't make it. This was last minute. Um, so I, I wrote a couple things, but I'm just going to go um, go off the list here. Uh, so I'm a project manager um, and engineer at Optimus Technologies. What we do is design and manufacture um, retrofit systems that fit on um, diesel engines to run on biofuels, such as 100% bio, uh, biodiesel blends, biofuels such as uh, animal fat, straight vegetable oil, waste vegetable oil, just like Rick said. Um, Currently, we have a couple of, um, of customers, such as the city of Pittsburgh. We have five retrofits done for them, and they're running 100% biofuels for them. Um, we also have two retrofits done um, for Talon Logistics, which is Giant Eagle's logistical uh, managers. Um, we're about to do eight more in the next two months. We're also ramping up a project with um, Greater Pittsburgh Food Bank. We're retrofitting nine of their vehicles. And Along with that, we are trying to systematically 
solve the problems for logistics. So um, currently we're trying to spec out fuels for each one of our customers. I think we used export in the past for um, operating engineers. They're based in New Alexandria. Um, so there, there is a lot of um, a lot of problems with logistics at the moment and infrastructure in this region. But thanks to uh, to Buckeye Terminals, you are one step closer to increasing the region's um, sustainability. So thank you for that. Congratulations and thanks for inviting me today. When you retrofit, is it feedstock specific? Um, it, it's actually client based. Whatever they want. So. If they want soybean, we spec out for soybean. Um, if they want animal fats, we'll, we'll try to source some animal fats. So it is? It is feed spot, feed spot. Feed spot. We don't usually blend. Chicken fat and so forth. Uh, together, it doesn't hold up as well in cold weather. And, uh, my understanding is that with uh, with the specification requirements that we have uh, in place, it's it's very difficult to get a an animal fat to meet those uh, specifications. While we don't prohibit them, I think that our specifications are are intended that that, that, the, that the the animal fats are not uh, able to to meet those specifications. Uh, one thing I did uh, fail to mention, and uh, I believe the, the uh, cold flow uh, system is up and uh, operational yes. as well. So uh, we do have uh, a, an additive uh, option as well to, to go on to, to help, uh, you know, specifically in the winter time. Um, that you know, while we do have the, the tighter specifications on the the, the biodiesel, uh, we do also offer a, a cold flow uh, additive for mm -hmm. for customers. Yeah. You inject that, or you mix it in your. Uh, it's it's injected at the loading rack, so uh, yeah, along with the, the um, it, it allows customers that uh, if you don't want the uh, the additive, you don't have to, to get it. But uh, uh, if you do, they uh, they can put that and uh, uh, when they um, have their their pick list of of additive or of uh, products, they'll see an additive with uh, with the cold flow. Is your storage insulated or heated in any way? Or? Yep. The biodiesel storage, yes. And uh, I think we should be able to see that uh, yes. uh, when we take Easily, the, the, yeah. the tour. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the, uh, the the diesel, the 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 base petroleum diesel is is not just the the, the biodiesel uh, system. It was for a time uh, <coughs> the additives to work with both diesel, ultra low, and with uh, bio. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and I know that there's been a lot of uh, advancement in the additive industry, and you know, obviously they knowing that uh, that that biodiesels are, are are here to stay. They they've spent a lot of time and effort on that, and and like I said, fortunately we we weren't the uh, the first settler uh, in in that case, so uh, less uh, less arrows.